Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, I'm gonna talk about identifying and replacing a hot tub circuit board. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so if you're like many of the hot tub owners out there and you have an older hot tub, the circuit board might have given up the ghost and you're looking for a replacement model to get that hot tub up and running again. Quite often replacing the circuit board is easier and it's cheaper than replacing the whole spa pack. And it also might be the case that you can't actually get a full replacement spa pack because it's gone end of life or it's not manufactured anymore. So the printed circuit board replacement might be your only option. Now, the biggest challenge in replacing a printed circuit board on a hot tub is actually identifying the circuit board in the first place. Switching it out, plugging in the, the cords, it's pretty straightforward, but finding and identifying the circuit board in the first place can be a challenge. So hopefully this short video will give you some insights and help you to find the part that you need and get that hot tub back up and running again. Now, before I get going, always a great opportunity to say please do subscribe to the channel, hit the notification icon to be notified when my videos go live. I do two long form videos just like this every single week, a whole bunch of shorts and everything on my channel focuses on DIY hot tub building, plunge pools, parts and, and pretty much everything in between. Okay, so how do we identify the circuit board that we actually need? Well, it may seem pretty obvious, but you need to look for a part number. And by part number, you're looking for the part number of the circuit board, not the serial number or the make and model of your hot tub. That would be absolutely no use to you whatsoever. Certainly, if it's an older tub, then the chances are the manufacturer of that particular tub might have gone bust. They generally don't keep great records anyway of what parts are actually in the tub itself. So your best bet is to look on the physical circuit board for a part number. So what do you do if you can't find a part number on your circuit board? Well, the next thing you need to turn to is the physical spa pack itself. Somewhere on that spa pack, and that's the one where the, you've got all of the different cables going into it, you've got the power cables, you've got your top side, all of your pumps and blower all come together inside of this spa pack. And it's where the circuit board's located. You're looking for the label on the outside of that spa pack. It would normally tell you the, the current rating, the voltage that it operates, but somewhere on there as well, there should be a part number. I'm gonna generalize here, but most of the spa packs are made by just a handful of companies. You've got Balboa, you've got Gecko, you've got ACC, you've got Hydroquip, and, and that's pretty much the majority of the market in terms of what's inside of your tub. So even if it's branded as the same make as your physical hot tub, the chances are that it's actually made by one of those manufacturers. So you're looking for something that identifies with those manufacturers a part number from said manufacturers, and we can then work backwards to actually find the circuit board that you need. Now, the circuit board that you need, i.e. the model number that you found either on that spa pack or on the circuit board itself, may not match in its entirety to the replacement that is available. Now, why is that, I hear you ask? Well, firstly, the part number may differ at the end. So, you know, for example, it might be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it might be hyphen one or hyphen two or three. That generally represents a firmware revision or a revision in general of that board. So if you've got an earlier one, the chances are that even if that revision number is different, it is going to match and it is the circuit board that you actually need. Secondly, at the end of those part numbers, you might have some random letters. As I said, a lot of these manufacturers will make their products under different brands for other hot tub manufacturers. And what they do is they use the letters at the end of the part number to designate the part that's being used for that particular OEM manufacturer. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the revision and the letters are not necessarily important 
when you are looking to replace the spar pack. Now, I will preface that with, in some cases they are because they have unique features, but for the more generic packs, things like the Balboa VS that's used in a huge amount of tubs under a huge amount of different part codes and part names, that's the same right across. You can put an original VS circuit board in there and it will be absolutely perfect for you. So I guess the, the takeaway from this section is don't get hung up on the revision number, the firmware revision, or the OEM letters at the end of a part number. Just focus on that core part code that you're looking for for your replacement circuit board. Probably the most important thing that you can do when you're trying to identify the circuit board is make sure that the replacement visually looks the same. So even if it's got new firmware on it, even if it's had a revision, visually it should be almost identical. When I say almost identical, you're looking for the same location of where your pumps plug in, you're looking for the same location of the, the main input to the board. It should have all of the same relays. It should be a case you're trying to play spot the difference and you shouldn't be able to find that many differences. That's the first thing. If it looks hugely different, it's the wrong board. You, it's as simple as that. And I guess the big thing here is if you are looking for a circuit board, you're not sure, please do reach out either comment in the video or you can find me at andy at buildahottub.com. I'm always happy to help with identifying and with the supply of circuit boards for your hot tubs. When it comes to replacing them, very simple, make sure you take some pictures before you unplug everything. That way you can then trace it all back and you are going to put things in like for like. Okay, so you know, take the pump out, plug in into the new circuit board, that kind of thing. Pretty straightforward. However, the chances of that circuit board being configured perfectly for your particular tub out of the box is slim to none. You are going to need to make some changes. So whether this is with the dip switch settings, so on pretty much all circuit boards, there's a little bank of switches that can be moved on or off. Those dictate things like how many pumps can run with the heater. It dictates whether it's a 50 hertz or 60 hertz, or even some of them are whether it's 115 volts or 230 volts. Now, setting the voltage of the board is really, really important. A lot of these circuit boards will work on both 115 volt systems as well as 230 volts. If you've got that voltage setting wrong, the chances are it will trip your breaker. So if you're set for a 115 volt system, you've got a 230 volt pump, guess what? It's gonna draw twice the amount of current, too much current, it's gonna trip your breaker. So make sure that the voltage is set correctly. Voltage being set incorrectly is probably the most common thing that I get with replacement circuit boards. The circuit board being bad out the box, it's very, very rare. I mean, it's that rare, I've not seen one myself. So if your circuit board, the brand new one is tripping the breaker, something is wrong in terms of the programming, your first point of call should definitely be to check the voltage into your system and make sure that it is set correctly on that circuit board. And lastly, another common problem is you plug it all in and the buttons don't behave on your top side control as you would expect. Usually this is a program setting or a low level program setting, depending on which brand uh, you're looking at. And this will be a software mode that you need to change to tell it that you have a dual speed pump and a blower, for example, and you're only getting a single speed on your, on your pump. Things like that are set with the program setting or the low level settings on your top side control. So check the manual for that one. And again, if you do get stuck, please do get in touch. I'm always here to help and happy to hear from you. So I hope you found this short video useful. As always, I appreciate the view. Thanks ever so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.